In just 38 months, China built a train station five times bigger than Grand Central. It sprawls across an area of 170 football fields and is currently the largest railway station on the planet. Projects of this scale usually take a decade or more elsewhere. The UK is still racing to complete HS2 Railway, proposed back in 2010, while California's high-speed rail was supposed to be completed five years ago. So the real question is, how did China build a city-sized station in just three years, while others are still stuck in paperwork? This is Chongqing, one of China's four municipalities. On the internet, it's famous for being the cyberpunk city of the nation. Here, trains pass through actual buildings, the rooftop of a tower is connected to a road, and the ground floor is actually not the ground at all. In Chongqing, the ground floor could be on the first, fifth, or tenth floor, depending on which side you enter from. That's why it's referred to as China's 8D city. The reason for this is its complex terrain. Chongqing is built on top of mountains and steep hills. This accounts for the abrupt height changes between different buildings. With a budding population of 32 million and no space to grow, Chongqing has had nowhere to go but up. The place consistently ranks among the most crowded cities on the planet. With the city bursting at the seams and its existing stations collapsing under demand, China needed something far bigger a masterpiece big enough to match Chongqing itself. Enter the Chongqing East Railway Station. Once you step inside, you will probably forget it's a train station. It looks and feels more impressive than some of the world's best airports. The station covers approximately 1.2 million square meters, making it the largest railway station in the world by total area. Designers have spared no expense in making the place look larger than life. The roof looks like a giant forest canopy. It's supported by 25 tree-shaped columns, symbolizing the native Huangjue trees. The roof alone weighs over 16,000 tons. It's big enough to cover the station's 15 platforms and 29 tracks. Yet the real story isn't its size, it's how fast they built it. In 2022, construction crews faced 40 degrees Celsius heat, steep terrain, and a timeline that seemed almost impossible the year 2025. In May 2022, the blueprint of the Chongqing East Railway Station was approved. In just a span of three years, the place went from this to this. Every beam, every roof panel, and every inch of concrete was placed with a precision that no human hand could match. In short, this colossal giant was assembled through an army of robots, during the summer, the construction site turned into a literal furnace. Crew members frequently collapsed under the heat, and the steep terrain made ground leveling nearly impossible. So instead, engineers turned to laser-guided bots. These machines work three times faster than humans and at a fraction of the cost. The same type of tech, by the way, is now used on farms to smooth soil before planting. Then came the roof and facade. This was especially a challenging part since it's made up of massive 800 kilogram glass panels. Each panel was lifted and placed by robotic arms, aligned with millimeter precision. Around the world, more and more mega projects are turning to automation, not just for speed, but for safety. Robots don't tire, don't collapse in the heat, and make precision work routine rather than risky. A famous example is the Boston Dynamics robot dog, this four-legged creature is just three feet high and has become a surprising asset for constructors. During the construction of the Harvey Milk Terminal at the San Francisco airport, this robot was used to capture construction progress photos. It has a camera on all four sides and can even balance itself in uneven soil. Without this asset, the crew would have to manually go around taking photos of the sites. In the case of Chongqing East Railway Station, robots weren't just assistants. They were the backbone of the operation. Patrol robots, working day and night through rain or heat, became the site's round-the-clock watchmen. Using AI-powered vision, they could detect missing safety helmets, misplaced vehicles, or structural issues within a 100 meters radius. Meanwhile, welding robots handled some of the toughest jobs, joining overhead pipe systems. 
With a spectacular accuracy of 0.1 millimeter, these bots sealed the steel pipe joint in just two hours. A human crew would have required six. But if speed could be bought by machines, why can't other developed nations do the same? Why can't UK, Australia, or America employ a bunch of bots and call it a day? Across much of the Western world, mega projects like this move at a snail's pace. Take the UK's High Speed 2, for example. It's a high-speed railway which has been under construction in England since 2019. Even though it was proposed more than a decade ago, it's still incomplete and already billions over budget. In fact, it has been delayed so many times that the government hasn't even provided a new deadline. It's that embarrassing at this point. Moving further west, we land in California, home to sunshine, Hollywood dreams, and one of the slowest mega-projects on Earth. The California High Speed Rail was announced back in 2008. It was supposed to open by 2020. Fast forward to today. It's nowhere near complete and needs another $100 billion to finish. Every reset, every redesign, and every political argument pushes the deadline further, now beyond 2033. So what really is China's secret? Well, here's the thing. China doesn't build faster by cutting corners. It builds faster by cutting friction. In the Chinese Republic, everything is centralized. There are no endless layers of committees or lawsuits. In stark contrast to California, there were no political disagreements or funding uncertainty on this project. Meanwhile, in the UK, the HS2 has fallen into the bureaucratic rabbit hole. A big chunk of time is spent on conducting land acquisition, environmental reviews, and fighting local lawsuits. In China, all of that goes out of the window. Everything moves in a cycle. Once a project is approved, the funding rolls in, the land is cleared, and construction begins, sometimes all within weeks. There's no endless back and forth between government bodies, no waiting for five different permits to lay a single track. Despite the fact that the Chongqing station was built at a record speed, the designers didn't cut corners when it came to came to aesthetics. After all, for an $8 billion mega project, it had better look like it. The most photographed spot is the station's west entrance. It's where the sun dips behind Chongqing's misty mountains, casting a golden glow across the glass facade. The plaza is dotted with lush greenery and mini gardens that make it feel more like a park than a transport hub. And then there's the waiting hall, usually the most dreaded part of any station. But here, it's a showstopper. The waiting hall is topped by a vast 130,000 square meter double curved ceiling. It's interrupted in the middle by droplet-shaped skylights that allow abundant natural light to immerse the space even the air conditioning units are shaped like camellia flowers, a tribute to the cultural identity of Chongqing. You will also find these oddly colored stairs in the ticketing area. It's safe to say the lead designer knew exactly how to calm the passengers' nerves. The Chongqing East Railway Station was crafted by HYAD Studio, led by the architect Xu Hui. Their vision paid off as the station won the prestigious Paris Design Award. But while beauty can win awards, it's efficiency that wins passengers. So the real question is, does this architectural marvel actually deliver on its biggest promise, speed? Chongqing's newest station is a blessing for many. The station integrates seven high-speed rail lines and two conventional railways. In addition, the station also incorporates four metro lines, Line 6, Line 24, Line 27, and Line 8. In this way, it can handle up to 16,000 passengers per hour. At full capacity, the station is expected to handle over 300 trains daily and approximately 100 million passengers annually. To accommodate this number, the station features 5,000 seats, with nearly 1,000 equipped with built-in USB ports. While waiting for your train, you can either indulge in local cuisine or grab a bite from the nearest KFC or McDonald's outlet. With the new railway connection, passengers can reach major Chinese hubs like Beijing, Shanghai, Guangzhou, and Shenzhen in just six hours. This project doesn't just exist in isolation. In fact, 
Its strategic location is part of a wider national goal. The station serves as the hub in China's high-speed rail network, passing through the southwest region, particularly the Chengdu-Chongqing economic circle. This integration is important in closing the gap between high economic zones and isolated districts within Chongqing and surrounding provinces. Moreover, the station's presence in Nan'an district will further boost the area's potential. Now, at the beginning of the video, we praised China's construction speed, but we have to remember that speed, too, comes at a cost. Apart from regulatory hurdles, there's a reason why similar projects elsewhere take more time. So what trade-offs were made by China in this case? And will they come back to haunt them after some time? 40 years ago, China was completely different. There were no tall buildings, sleek roads or glittering skylines. Cities like Chongqing were industrial hubs wrapped in fog, not global showcases. But in just a few decades, China transformed itself through a single philosophy. Build fast, build big, build now. Since then, the country has relied massively on its construction industry to modernize its economy. By continually building roads and railways, China was investing in itself while also creating jobs and markets. This strategy worked because the nation's rapidly booming population needed these things. The supply was there and so was the demand. One journal reported that by 2025, China will have constructed the equivalent of 10 New York-sized cities. While these numbers may look fantastic, it is not without faults. Behind the facade of these colossal projects lay faulty construction practices. In China, developers are often rewarded not for quality, but for speed. Architects and contractors, under immense pressure to deliver on impossible deadlines, are sometimes forced to sacrifice durability for delivery. Contractors have also been known to cut corners. For example, they might reduce wall insulation or substitute high-quality finishers for inferior ones. In the United States, architects maintain quality control through specifications and review of submittals and shop drawings. This system of checks and balances is missing in China. In 2008, these rushed construction practices came back to haunt them. During the Wenchuan earthquake, hundreds of school buildings crumbled, killing thousands of children. The heartbreaking reason? Thin iron wires had been used in place of proper steel reinforcement rods a fatal shortcut taken in the name of speed. The people of China now refer to such projects as tofu dregs. This term is synonymous with poorly executed projects. Even though China has tightened regulations on reinforcement, the mindset of rushing projects is still there. Nevertheless, it's unfair to limit this mindset to China only. Developers around the world are jumping from one project to another. That's partly because of pressure from investors who want an immediate return on their investment. Will Chongqing East Station prove to be another tofu dreg, or is this pure skepticism? Let us know your thoughts below. If you liked our video and want to see more similar content, don't forget to smash that subscribe button. As always, we will see you in the next video.